Nice try, Buster. Welcome to another movie plot. Enjoy the memories and watch out for spoilers. The movie opens suddenly with a saw blade cutting through everything in its path. It pursues a magnetic collar around a terrified scientist's neck and eventually catches him, leaving his head to be made fun of by Confederate General McGrath as he retrieves the disc. The year's 1869 and McGrath visits a saloon in West Virginia to wait for the rest of his gang. He uses a trumpet as a hearing aid and attracts the attention of the entertainer Rita, as well as an obvious man dressed in drag. Gordon's an undercover marshal for the US government and uses gadgets to overcome physical challenges. When McGrath's choosing himself a woman, the obvious choice is pushed aside by Gordon who the general instantly picks for whatever reason. He then shoots another potential suitor dead and forces Gordon to sing on stage for the whole bar. Nearby soiling the town's water supply, Captain West's been waiting a week for McGrath's gang to arrive. He ignores his date while watching the Confederate soldiers load up a wagon with boxes of nitro. They startle the horses who take off running and knock down the tower landing West butt naked right in the middle of the gang. He's thrown down a hat instead of his weapon and must fight the unarmed soldiers by hand, until being saved by the perfectly timed falling water tank from approaching riflemen. Before it escapes West launches himself onto the back of the runaway wagon and is almost thrown over a cliff when the horses stop. He backs them up and sees McGrath himself, who retrieves Gordon from the stage and drags him upstairs to an empty bedroom. Gordon's been tasked to find the missing scientists and hypnotizes McGrath with his belt for questioning. Before the general can answer anything the prototype fails, but West having worked his way up the side of the building bursts through the window and punches McGrath out. Before West can finish him though he's distracted by Gordon allowing McGrath to escape. He alerts his men setting off the entire saloon into a brawl with Gordon using a bottle of perfume and West his pistol. The man who hired McGrath to retrieve the scientist shown watching from his wagon of women outside, with Miss Lip and Reader reading out loud the lips of everything the agents say. Now what? Dr. Loveless lost his lower half fighting for the South and uses a steam-powered wheelchair to get around. As he leaves he detaches the wagon of explosives sending it into the side of the saloon and blowing the building to pieces. West survives the explosion and travels to the White House a few days later to speak with the President. He's given special permission to carry a loaded weapon inside the Oval Office and reports on the events that transpired at the saloon. Suddenly he draws his pistol on the president and uses threats to convince the imposter to admit that he's Gordon, as his Harvard class ring's given him away since the president went to West Point. The real president enters the office as Gordon takes off his disguise claiming it to be a security measure. President Grant decides to make the two agents partners and takes them into the intelligence room to give them the details of their next mission. The nation's top experts in hydraulics and explosives have all been kidnapped by McGrath in some evil scheme to develop a weapon. A letter was delivered alongside a cake covered in spiders that orders them to surrender the United States government within a week. With a time frame to catch the villain, it shouldn't be a problem for Gordon's bivalve interior combustion twice exhausted by axle nitro cycle. West thinks nothing of it until it easily catches him and leaves the captain in a cloud of smoke. Soon after West catches up to Gordon who's now knitting on board his personal train the Wanderer. A contraption launches West into the seat beside him where Gordon claims that he's knitting his latest invention, though the bulletproof chainmail's not yet been tested. When West strikes Gordon for his arrogance, the nutty professor defends himself with another series of contraptions trapping West below the train. For some reason a lever down there also flips Gordon's seat upside down where only now does he agree on a truce. The Wanderer's operator Coleman asks for directions which they receive from Dr. Morton's head. Using a lantern Gordon shines a light through his retinas which are imprinted with the last image he saw, where inside McGrath's coat pocket peeks out an invitation to a costume party at Loveless's swamp mansion. West decides he's not going to dress up while Gordon does his usual thing of going all in. Before they get their West refills one of Gordon's fake breasts with water instead of buckwheat instantly making it feel more realistic, which Gordon almost gets himself shot over when taking a note. When they arrive in New Orleans West knocks out a Confederate guard and sneaks into the building undetected. He finds Loveless's assistants locking Rita inside a cage and is caught by one who just thinks his outfit's a costume. Miss East leaves him to join the festivities which begins with a papier-mâché head of Lincoln being blown up to unveil Loveless. After greeting the foreign dignitaries he approaches West and the two begin right away with racial and short jokes. Loveless says he hasn't had any contact with McGrath in years, then leaves and goes to attend a meeting with McGrath in his study, where he informs the general to meet him tonight by a lake to receive his gang's new weaponry. West sneaks in after them and uses a graphite etching to discover the location but is caught by Miss East. She tries to seduce him to allow a man hiding in a painting to shoot him in the back, but her eyes give him away and West dodges it causing him to shoot East. He then shoots every other mural in the room leaving several other assassins lying dead when he exits. 
Meanwhile Gordon's attended the party as a Russian frontiersman but West assumes he's gone with the same look from earlier. When West attempts to inform his partner of Lovelace's plan he jokingly drums on the supposed fake breasts that turn out to be real. So the real Gordon encourages the crowd to take him outside for a hanging and throws them a rope. He uses this time to search the house for the missing scientists and finds the caged entertainer. He cuts her free using a grinder attached to a compressor inside his boot. As we cut to West trying to talk his way out of a lynching, claiming that drums are just a way as people communicate. The woman seems flattered until he mentions that he thought she was a man. Gordon rides past on a wagon like a bat out of hell and West learns that the rope he supplied him with is made of rubber, allowing him to slingshot himself onto the back of the wagon and escape. Rita reveals that she isn't really an entertainer, and was locked in the cage after being discovered as a spy searching for her father who's one of the missing scientists. Angry at his partner for using him as bait West detaches one of the horses and rides off to catch McGrath alone. He sits atop the lake on Lovelace's steamboat where we hear that his nickname Bloodbath came from him butchering a community of freed slaves at New Liberty. His men have assembled on the shoreline when a heavily armed tank emerges from the lake. The gang cheer assuming it's their latest weaponry for taking back the country, when it opens fire in a 360-degree arc. McGrath watches as his entire gang slaughtered and accuses Lovelace of being a traitor. Lovelace counters that McGrath betrayed him first when he surrendered to the north, and shoots the general with a double barrel hidden in the back of his wheelchair. His assistants throw McGrath into the lake while Lovelace addresses his foreign benefactors who are impressed with the demonstration. Shortly after Gordon and Rita arrive and wonder what could have killed all the men. West relates the massacre to the people of New Liberty and describes the tank in detail though he only ever believed the stories were superstitious nonsense. They find McGrath still alive who explains that Lovelace is really the devil responsible for the butchering of New Liberty, then dies before he can tell them where he's gone. Luckily while Rita was inside the cage she overheard the other women mention Utah so that's where they order Coleman to take them. They leave Rita behind at the station for her own safety, but she manages to make her way on board anyway via the sunroof. With Wes still wanting to abandon her she flirts with Coleman enough that he doesn't want to stop the train, then convinces Wes to allow her to accompany them with a kiss making Gordon jealous. Lovelace's tank runs on rails and forms the front part of his train, and when the wanderer catches up to them it uses hydraulic spider's legs to swap positions with them on the track. His assistant Munisha opens fire on the wanderer so West attempts to use one of Gordon's gadgets to board them. Trying to get closer his cable breaks so he uses the rubber rope to attach himself to Lovelace's train and sling himself onto the rear. When attempting to seal the smokestack West's attacked by one of Lovelace's men but uses a blade Gordon installed in his boot to kill him. Once the stack gets blocked Munisha fires a grappling missile through the Wanderer and both trains are rendered motionless. Assuming they're about to be killed or worse, Rita uses a billiard ball filled with sleeping gas to knock both her Gordon and a returning West unconscious. The boys wake with the magnetic collars around their necks and Loveless commandeering the Wanderer since his own train was destroyed. Amazonia forces Coleman to drive the train as Loveless reveals that his base is located at Spider Canyon. He says this knowing that the brash West will step outside of his experimental prison causing a nearby machine to activate. It fires out two giant saw blades that chase them through a cornfield just like it did the scientist. They're able to duck the blades at the last second and use this to leap into each other's arms causing the blades to collide and the two plunge into the muddy crevice below. In a sarcastic response to West's brutish way of doing things, Gordon strikes a collar which reverses the magnet's polarity and the two get stuck together. It then switches to the blade in West's boot, then when he removes it the belt around Gordon's waist. They try run in opposite directions but the force is too strong and drags them back tumbling down into a pool of water. Finally Gordon spots his toolkit floating and is able to remove the magnetic collars. That night around the campfire, the two watch a desert wasp kill a tarantula and lay eggs inside it. When asked about his parents, West says he ran away from a plantation when he was a child and didn't see them again until they were slaughtered along with everyone else at New Liberty. The next day while Gordon's carrying the magnetic collar it suddenly drags him through the desert to discover Lovelace's hidden train line. They follow it to Spider Canyon and find the Wanderer parked beside Lovelace's hidden fortress. He emerges at the helm of an 80-foot tall mechanical tarantula that steps over them and begins to march on the president. It's briefly pinned in by a trio of rock columns but shoots giant fireballs that blow them to pieces. President Grant's currently attending the spike driving ceremony marking the completion of the first transcontinental railroad. He's unable to drive it in as the shockwaves from the approaching machine keep bouncing it out. When it storms up the crowds flee leaving only the president who refuses to surrender the government. Loveless destroys Grant's train as a threat, but Gordon steps out in his disguise and pretends that the real president's his body double. Unable to decipher the two, Loveless just captures them both in a net and kidnaps the pair instead. 
During the distraction West sneaks up one of the spider's legs but is caught by Munisha at the top who puts a bullet in his chest. After some time spent unconscious he wakes up and removes the bullet from Gordon's bulletproof mail. At Lovelace's fortress, he announces that America will be returned to their former territory owners with whatever's left being called Loveless Land. He's about to have Gordon executed for the president's refusal to sign over the nation, when West enters disguised as an exotic dancer and begins to seduce Loveless. He steals the key to the handcuffs and slips them to Gordon in the middle of his routine, but when returning to Loveless a flamethrower built into the dress goes off and West aims it at the soldiers. Loveless escapes with his girls who knock out the president and take him to continue persuading him to sign the surrender. The agents leave Rita with her father, and having been inspired by Da Vinci's flying machine and the desert wasp, Gordon outfits his bicycle with wings to pursue the spider. They ride off a cliff together and fly towards the tarantula that's just reached the first town in its negotiations. Loveless obliterates the entire place and when Grant still refuses continues on to the next. Gordon and West arrive and begin dropping firebombs from their makeshift wasp. Amazonia uses a Gatling gun to put holes in the wings causing them to crash into the head of the spider, killing Munitia in the process. The final two assistants take them as hostages and bring them before Loveless, where after failing to convince them to join him he drops West through a trapdoor into the engine room. Mechanics attack him with one producing blades from his arms, which West tries to counter with his own but it's snapped off. After a hard-fought battle he eventually defeats two sending one out the side of the spider with a chain around his neck. A third uses moves he says he learned from a Chinese man, but West just shovels him in the face. The largest of the Cajun workers appears to have both a metal dome and metal groin to go along with it. He nearly kills West, but takes too many shots to the noggin from a wrench causing Metalhead to short out and tumble off the edge. Loveless goes down to do it himself and reveals a set of mechanical spider legs that emerge from his wheelchair. Able to swivel on his seat, he beats West around the engine room and crushes him beneath his hoof. An awkward move of his arm produces a derringer that Gordon forgot was up his sleeve. He shoots at Loveless, missing him but striking a hydraulic line in his leg causing him to collapse in place. The torso of a man drags himself back to the rest of his chair in hopes of reaching the double barrel built in. Amazonia and Lip and Reader fight back but Gordon uses his dance moves to make one fall off while Grant just punches the other overboard. With a large cliff coming up and unable to find how to stop the spider with the control panel, West dodges the shotgun blast that hits exhaust causing the tarantula to stop just as it goes over the end. The angle throws Loveless outside along with West who hangs on dangling from the wheelchair. Loveless calls West a coward for not pulling a lever and killing them both, so the captain obliges sending Lovells into the canyon and grabbing hold of the mechanic suspended by the chain. With Loveless defeated, the president announces to West and Gordon that he's creating the Secret Service and appoints them Agent 1 and Agent 2, but doesn't say which is which. He then commandeers the Wanderer since his train was blown up and leaves the boys to find their own way home. Rita thanks the two sincerely for everything they've done to help, then reveals that the scientist's really her husband and she was just using their lust to rescue him. The final scene shows West and Gordon seemingly riding horses into the sunset, but it's actually their new patrol vehicle. And the movie ends. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.